Hey Mike, I need that eFast video ASAP. Thanks, Jesse. But I need a volunteer. Come in. Hi, Dr. Zwonk. Yeah. Hi, I'm Felix Hegarty. I'm uh, one of the new medical students on the emergency medicine clerkship. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I was up all night getting ready for the clerkship and doing some reading, and I read about the extended focused assessment uh, by sonography and trauma examination. That's also called the eFAST exam. The eFAST exam. The eFAST exam. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I saw that. Ultrasound is aimed at answering focused questions. What four questions does the eFAST answer? I think from what I remember reading, it answers questions like, is there intraperitoneal free fluid? Uh, is there a pericardial effusion? Is there a hemothorax or possibly a pneumothorax? And what are the indications for it? Any blunt or penetrating trauma. Uh huh. And when's it most useful? Uh, I think it's most useful in hemodynamically unstable patient, patients because it'll help guide your treatment, whether you need rapid fluid or blood resuscitation, or possibly a quick intervention like a chest tube or needle thoracostomy, or even possibly a pericardial centesis. Very good. You know, your timing couldn't be more perfect. Perfect for what? Come with me. All right, take off your shirt. Perfect. I've drawn some anatomically accurate thoracic anatomy on Felix Hegarty's chest to help illustrate important structures and relationships. To start, put a glob of gel on the epigastrum and grab the gel from here. This saves time. Start in the right upper quadrant. Start with the probe horizontal, mid-axillary line near the lower ribs. If you don't see anything, move the probe more cephalad or caudad until you see liver. Once you see liver, you can oblique the probe to maximize your window in between the ribs. From here, you can rock the probe up or down, left or right, until you see what you're looking for. Here is Morrison's pouch, the space between the liver and the kidney. There may be some adipose with a gray tint in this area, but there should be no dark black stripes which would indicate free fluid. Be sure to angle your probe above the diaphragm and look for pleural fluid which would be black and presumably hemothorax in the trauma patient. Next, move to the left upper quadrant. You can see from my talented illustration that the spleen is much smaller and more superior than the liver. It is also often more posterior, so if you're having trouble with this challenging view, move your probe more posterior and superior. At times, you may have your probe close to the bed posteriorly and the axilla superiorly. Again, after finding your window, you can oblique the probe and rock it to find your view of the splenal renal recess shown by the dashed line, as well as the region between the spleen and the diaphragm and above the diaphragm shown by the asterisks. The pelvis is the easiest view to obtain. I chose not to draw any anatomy here because it's so easy. Place the probe just above the pubic symphysis and tilt it down into the pelvis. Start in the sagittal up-down plane, fan left and right, then move to the transverse plane and tilt it. If there is any urine in the bladder, you will see it as a black circle or oval shape. If the bladder is empty, you will just see a bunch of echoes and shadows. Remember, you are looking for areas of irregular, dark, black, free fluid outside of the bladder. For the heart, notice the different way of grabbing the probe. Place the probe just under the xiphoid process, quite flat, and push hard, angling a bit towards the heart. If you're having trouble seeing the heart, you can move the probe to the patient's right and use the liver as a window to see the heart. The most common mistake here is to have the probe too far inferior and stomach gas gets in the way. You will likely see two chambers of the heart, the crescent-shaped right ventricle and the more oval left ventricle. You shouldn't see any black fluid stripe around the heart. Look for good squeeze or function. Finally, to look for pneumothorax, place the probe on the patient's chest perpendicular to the ribs. Decrease the depth to 10 centimeters and move the probe up or down to look for good lung sliding.
Exact same thing on the other side. If you are fortunate enough to know how to do M mode, you can use M mode and place the cursor across the plural line between the ribs, watching for the waves on a grainy, sandy beach indicating no pneumothorax. Doctor's Wonk. Uh, I got this. Start with the gel in the epigastrum. First to the right upper quadrant. Oh boy. Black stripe of free fluid in Morrison's pouch between the liver and the kidney. Moving above the diaphragm, we see the same thing. Dark black fluid. That's a hemothorax. Now onto the left upper quadrant. That's a black fluid stripe in the spinorenal recess between the spleen and the kidney. And again, fluid above the diaphragm. More evidence of a hemothorax. Pelvis view. There's fluid everywhere down here. His bowels are surrounded by it. Cardiac. There's a small stripe of black around the anterior edge of the heart. That's a pericardial effusion, probably hemopericardium. And I can see that his heart is working hard. To the right chest. Good lung sliding. Waves on a sandy beach. No pneumothorax. Onto the left lung. No lung sliding at all along the pleura. And the barcode sign on M mode. That's a definite pneumothorax. Swank's hard up. Call surgery! Felix, right? Med student in the ED? Yeah, that's me. Hey, nice you done on that fast today. We got him to the OR, saved his life, all because of you. Uh, what kind of ultrasound do you want? No, don't do that. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this? Is that what you want? Yeah, so like, walk in. Uh, hold on, sorry. I was looking up. <laughs> 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 I'm Rob Lefebvre, one of the supervising guys. How can I help you? That's you. <laughs>